Hi everyone, my name is Ollie. I'm a junior doctor living and working in England and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now this is going to be a, a bit of a different video. It's, it's not one that I necessarily expected to make. And I've actually done a reflection, as junior doctors are supposed to do from time to time, for my portfolio. And actually I think it has been one of those fairly key experiences in my life so far as a very junior doctor. So I thought actually there would be some value in, in sharing it with you that watch this channel and seeing what you think. And as the title suggests, I'm sure you can tell what it's about. This is about the first time that I was called to confirm the death of a patient in the hospital. As I'm sure you can imagine, patients actually die in hospital all the time. Sometimes unexpectedly, sometimes obviously if they're palliative, we were expecting that to happen. And ultimately when somebody dies, one of the jobs that you will have to do as a doctor is you will be called to confirm the death. It's sometimes in fact referred to as diagnosis and certification of death. And it forms part of the medico-legal proceedings that take place after somebody has died. So please come along with me as I recount you this, this scenario. I'm just very interested in essentially what you think or how you might react to similar circumstances because it's not happened to me before. And as I say, really one of those pivotal moments that I thought it was worth capturing for you all as, as part of the documentary uh, that is this series. So the scenario was I was working as the on-call doctor on a medical ward. And that's one of the really key details because I'm not normally part of the ward team, have never worked on this ward before, don't know any of the patients. So I worked my shifts over the weekend. They were stupidly busy, some of the busiest shifts that I've worked since starting as a junior doctor. And one of the healthcare assistants working on the ward came and grabbed me and said, oh, um, Ollie, one of the patients has passed away can you go and confirm the death please? Because again, it's, it's one of those roles that is traditionally done by a doctor. I'm sure that nurse practitioners and physician associates can probably do it as well. And this is a patient who I'd never met before, didn't know anything about, basically hadn't had any interactions with while doing these series of on-call shifts over the weekend because you're essentially putting out fires um, all weekend. You only really get called if there is a problem you know, you don't get called to see patients who are just ticking along and the nurses are looking after perfectly well. And that was when it hit me that I didn't actually know what to do. I filled out death certificates before and remembered learning about this, but I didn't remember ever actually having a practical demonstration of what happens when you confirm a death. And again, I knew kind of roughly the sorts of things that you had to do. And it involves things like checking for signs of life, seeing if they're breathing, do they respond to your voice, do they respond to pain, things like a squeeze of the trapezius or supraorbital pressure or whatever, feeling for central pulses, and then ultimately you're listening for the, the lack of a heartbeat and lung sounds, among a few other things. But I'd never actually seen it done in person, so not being 100% sure what to do, I did what I would advise you do when you don't know what to do, which is call for help. So I called the SHO, the FY2 doctor senior to me, sort of said, hi mate, um, I don't really know what to do. I've just been called to confirm the death of a patient. Never done it before, never seen it done. Can you come and help or, or just give me some advice on what to do? And they very kindly just said, you know, look at Geeky Medics. They've got a really good performer, which is a very good website, by the way, Geeky Medics, for any medical PA students. It's got a huge amount of information on there. So what I ended up doing was simply printing off the, the performer that comes in that article putting it in my pocket and then going over to the room where the patient and their family were. And the charge nurse, the person in charge of the ward, um, I think could see that I looked a little bit sort of nonplussed and uncomfortable and, and came with me to go and see the family and said, um, hi folks, sorry, the doctor's here. Would you mind just stepping outside for a couple of minutes so he can confirm the death? And, and they did, obviously I introduced myself very briefly and they left the room together. So it's now just me and the patient. And again, one of the healthcare assistants that was working on the ward and someone that I think had, had known this patient and looked after them while they were there said to me as I was going in, like, are you okay? Do you want me to come in with you? And I thanked them and I said, no, I'll, I'll be okay and, and went in by myself, basically out of embarrassment because I was going to have to get this checklist out of my pocket and, and work through it to make sure that I did it properly and didn't miss anything out. In retrospect, I actually really wish that I'd brought her in with me. I think she would have totally understood what I was doing, especially since it was my first time doing it. And equally, I felt that I was actually maybe robbing her of a little bit of closure because she'd obviously looked after this patient. But anyway, went in by myself, all the lights on full, so it's just me and the the patient who's now deceased, obviously. And one of the things that I was told by, by a colleague that I'd worked with in my previous job about confirming deaths 
was that he'd found it easier to to talk to the patient as you're going through the motions to confirm the death just because it, it makes it seem a little bit less odd somehow and it, it makes it more routine like you would normally talk to a patient when you're dealing with them or examining them and I'm actually really glad that I did that um, it did make it feel less odd and it, it reduced the gravity of the situation somehow I did manually close the patient's eyes just obviously very gently um, because they were open when I went into the room I I did for some reason feel very odd about that so I just gently lowered the lids down got my geeky medics checklist out of my pocket and put it on the table next to the bed and, and worked through it and it, it's not a complicated performer at all you're just looking for the absence of signs of life and something that I did notice which I'd not really thought about is that normally obviously if I listen to somebody's chest if I put a stethoscope anywhere on somebody's body there is always noise coming from somewhere whether that is the heart sounds that you can hear echoing or the lung sound or ambient noise in the room or they're sort of trying to talk to you while you're examining that there is always noise when you put a stethoscope on somebody but in this instance obviously because somebody's died everyone's being really quiet there is no noise everything is extremely quiet and obviously what you're trying to do is listen for heart and lung sounds because if you do hear anything that might be a sign that the person has not actually passed away but what that actually means in practicality is that when you're listening in a very quiet environment any tiny sound becomes massively amplified so if you've actually got your hands on the chest piece and you make a tiny movement you'll hear that movement you get all these artifacts of noise these tiny movements your chest movements the tiny pulses in your hands they all suddenly seem a million times louder and you're like was that a noise and you're listening for what feels like a really long time if I remember correctly it's heart sounds for three minutes so you've got your stethoscope on the chest for three minutes solid trying to listen for heart sounds then once you've done that lung sounds for five minutes and when it's just you and the deceased patient in what is a deathly quiet room that's a long time to just sit there and listen for the absence of noise and I'm sure that I did it for closer to maybe seven or eight minutes um, instead just so I could be absolutely sure but anyway once I'd done that written down the time that the death was confirmed and the last thing I did while I was in the room was I went and opened the window um, it's one of these odd hospital traditions that people have told me about before I remember one of my colleagues who was a nurse before she became a doctor she told me that they used to do this where it was kind of this nice idea that it's so that the soul can get out and get out of the hospital and all of that I'm not a superstitious or a religious person at all but it, it just somehow felt like the right thing to do in the moment somehow said goodbye to the patient just like you would do with anybody else you know goodbye it was nice to meet you and then um, turn the lights off and, and close the door and went out and then the last bit obviously was the conversation with the family I introduced myself and, and sort of said hi I'm Ollie I'm the doctor on the ward I'm really sorry I didn't know your relative I would have liked to have met him I felt almost guilty in a, in a sense because obviously I've never met this man there maybe would have been some closure potentially for that family if they thought that I'd been looking after him because it must have sounded so hollow in a sense to that family like I've never met your relative before I've not looked after him but I've just confirmed him dead like it, it almost in my head it sounded a little bit callous but anyway the family credit to them were very very understanding and, and they said you know we completely understand you're on call we're sorry you had to deal with that especially not having known him but something that was really nice a kind of way to end all this was that the staff on the ward had been absolutely unbelievable and that they'd looked after their relative you know incredibly well and they couldn't have asked for more support from the healthcare team and I thought that was really nice and I included that when I did my formal documentation of everything and then basically after I've done that my shift was over that was it and I went home and like I say I've just been thinking about it on and off for the last sort of several days and, and done this reflection and thought it would be a good thing to share with you guys so, so that's the end of the story um, please let me know what you'd think what have your experiences been with with dying patients and palliative patients in hospital outside of hospital confirmation of death have you received any training in confirmation of death if you're a medical or a PA student or if you're a nurse or a nurse practitioner or a healthcare assistant I'd really like this to be an opportunity to share experiences I'd really like this to be an opportunity to kind of share experiences if anybody's got any ideas of best practices or resources they'd like to share please do let me know and I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say
So that's it. Take care and I'll see you next time.